Hello everyone, I'm Renown Zero. We are back again talking about some nonsense going on, of course, when it comes to CG. We just recently found out that CG was apparently cancelled from C2E2 for certain reasons outside of my control or anybody's control, really. We're going to go through everything and we're going to just go through a couple comments and discuss what's happening over on Twitter when it comes to CG being cancelled from C2E2. Now I'm going to state right away, I don't care if CG, like John Malin, EVS, or Shane Davis want to have a presence at C2E2. They should be allowed to have a presence at C2E2. Perfectly fine. If they broke in the rules in any kind of way and it's against C2E2's policies, okay, well, they did a bad thing and C2E2 doesn't want them there. Other than that, I don't care if they have their comics somewhere. At a convention. Don't care. Doesn't bother me. Doesn't affect me in any way. What happens is. They expect people to come out. In support of them. After crapping all over the Ripperverse. For months and months and months. And you have EVS. Who dedicated two different live streams. To other people. He created Trash Cast. In spite of Yellow Flash. He created Friday Night Trash. In spite of Friday Night Tights. And he actually believes. At least. From what he said about Trash Cast, that he's stealing uh, Yellow Flash's audience. So he streams on Saturday rather than being around his family. I'm sure he believes the same thing about Friday Night Trash since he streams that on Fridays around the same time that Friday Night Tights is going on. But we're going to get into everything as soon as I get to my usual promotions of people. We have Yara number one, 9,572 purchasers, $1.311 million, over 16,000 copies sold. Breaking the sales goal by four, you know, four hundred thirty-seven percent of the sales goal has been collected. Of course, you have Blade Devil Two. I always promote this book. I highly recommend it for anyone who likes that anime manga style type of book. I loved Blade Devil One. I'm looking forward to getting Blade Devil Two. If you want to jump in on Blade Devil One without having to add it on as a, add it as an add-on with Blade Devil Two, you can get it right here with Blade Devil One for just ten dollars over at Sick Fox Studios Unlimited Campaign. We also have people like Tyler, who makes books like Sexy Witch, Academia, Super Plumber Sisters, The Girl with the Mega Fists, and things of that nature. People have been signing up for My Sexy Witch Academia. This is more of a not safe for work type book, but you have other books like The Girl with the Mega Fists, I believe is like 200 pages. You can get in on that. You can buy from his online store. You can also get in on Super Plumber Sisters and any other books he's put out. Joe Ball is, of course, putting out a book called Death, Death, Death. 300-page book. The campaign is closed, but if you do follow him over on Twitter, you can DM him for the PayPal option and reserve your copy at Fulfillment. So now we're going to get into this thing that John Mellon put out. He says, Cancel culture is alive and well at C2E2. Five weeks, ago, five weeks before the show, we have suddenly been removed as exhibitors due to allegations of making nonspecific, quote-unquote, offensive comments. We are artists, publishers, and YouTube entertainers. That also talk politics with sometimes edgy humor. Can we be offensive? Absolutely. Can, are we criminals or harassers? No. Conservatives? Yes. Your peers? Yes. C2E2 also alleges that Shane Davis, Booth was under his company name, was subletting his booth by having others sit in. We have never hidden our intentions from C2E2. We were told to list the booth under a single company by them. Had we known there was an issue for our 20 by 20 premier exhibitor booth, we would have divided a 20 by 20 into four 10 by 10 booths and asked for them to be combined. If there was an issue... If there was an issue, why weren't we approached with a chance to find a solution after spending thousands of dollars? They wanted us out. I fully expect our industry to turn another blind eye to this incident and take no stand whatsoever against this monstrous behavior that continues to rot our industry from the inside. We would like C2E2 to reinstate our booth. C2E2 has a chance to be on the right side of history and end this shameful practice of cancel culture for comic book conservatives in 2024. And yes, the... Exhibitor Booth was under Nine Lives Comics, which is the comic company that Shane Davis runs. That's the name that he has for it. And I responded. I said, this is true, C2E2. That's garbage. These guys in the comics should be allowed to exist at your convention. We have Jay Bomb, a fan, of course, saying, right on, dude. Steven says, I firmly disagree. If Exhibitor Booths are a set amount and you decide to sublet yours to turn into multiple, that's essentially evading their sweet preferences for Premier Booths being big names, all eyes on X. I said of four smaller lines unless contract allows sublet. So that's, again, me when I said that if they did violate some type of rule and they were unaware, you know, C2E2 should let them know. Maybe they did know of the rule. 
and try to go around it. Who knows? We really have no clue. Mr. Brady says they broke TOS, tried to sneak some exhibitors in without paying or contract. Iris not saying, says, I wonder if the fact EVS was to be at their booth had anything to do with it. It's hard to actually give a crap when they work so hard against the Ripperverse. With that said, it shouldn't be denied for having a booth. I agree. You also have people who, again, these are people, some of these people that have muted were people that are trying to crap all over me. Now they're agreeing with me when I, of course, have had this same opinion forever where I have never tried to deplatform. I've never tried to downplay someone's business. I've never said that someone shouldn't be supported. I just said I won't support them if I choose not to support somebody. If someone wants to support something with their money, that's perfectly fine. We have right on. We have seven nine saying damn right. We have this person, moronic opinion, saying this is the type of people see to to cancel Shane's booth for people that had no plan on attending but happy to cancel others from the event. Bumpkins, who has been a Ripperverse detractor for quite a bit, they're allowed to exist. Is Mike Wheeler, which I believe is Mindy Wheeler's husband. We have X War saying. They should stop crying, right? That they should stop crying about being gay kept and go rent their own place. Sucks for them, but it's time they put money where their mouth is. Even though EVS is a all these things, he should not have been banned from C2E2. I agree. Even John De La Rose had the same opinion, saying, People are mad at me this morning because I said it's bad that a convention cancels conservative creators. I'm sorry if you don't like them, but I hate how these corporate convention entities act. I've had very personal experience with them. And don't want and don't want anyone else to have to suffer it. So Shane, you know, I put this out in response to what Shane Davis had to say, which was I've had it with SJWs and cancel culture, also I'm not thrilled with these fake YouTubers that are supposedly about the movement and like to ride YouTube with clickbait like cancel pigs. Working in comics in the three years I worked at Legendary, you come across fake people all the time. They always have the same set of expressions and actions. I was gullible to expect them to support Gina Carano. These people are often fake as F, backstabbers, and quick and quite frankly, little bees. I've entered a new stage. Jada Mange, the Fs I have to give are next to none. Kind of like the Fs I had to give when EVS supported me being doxxed and said he was okay with that happening to me if it ever happened. And I say, this has to be said. While I support your ability to be at C2E2 after actively trying to crap on an audience of people that like the Ripperverse, you can't expect everyone to have your back when people like EVS constantly create quote-unquote podcasts out of spite for others. I say this as being a repeat customer of yours moving forward. I will no longer be a customer if the constant attacks on someone's business continues. Jay Bama says, if Ripperverse was getting canceled from a show, I guarantee Shane would, like myself, be against it. Anyone slapping this on really against cancel culture or SJWs, you unlike some see the bigger picture. They cancel, if they can cancel us, then you guys are next. Ripperverse is mocked because of quality and cost. Nobody in CG wants to cancel Air July. I don't believe that at all. They just want him to produce quality, value for cost. He invites criticism, as does Lee, but nobody in CG will stop you. I commend you for supporting what's right. Yes, why can't people just enjoy comics and get along? It's not rocket science. That is to build a thriving community of comic readers. You need to build bridges, not burn them. Did they expect everyone they trashed on to rally behind them just because they're getting quote-unquote canceled? Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Of course, this guy gave me a long speech. I'll give my responses. I'll see, show you my responses here. It says, if you don't want to buy a high-quality comic, that's your prerogative. To me, all that is is you're acting very smug. You're acting high above everybody else. You're acting as if you are the only person making a high quality comic. To which I responded to you by saying, see, this is the smugness people hate. This is why people have started to become against buying your stuff. Death, Death, Death is a high quality product of 300 pages for $30. You don't see Joe Ball acting like this, acting this way. So people have constantly said that I'm bringing... Joe Ball and using him in some kind of weird war, which I'm not. If I was using Joe Ball in a war, per se, I would be tagging him now, wouldn't I? I don't tag Joe Ball in any of the posts talking about him. The only time posts involve Joe Ball is when I'm promoting and talking about his book every time he puts a page out on Twitter. I'll repost it and I'll say, you guys should back this book. It looks amazing. If Sue and the God saying, you ever notice they run from Alpha Core when they say it's not, they really lose all credibility. Like 10 comics from now, are we still going to have to hear about ISOM 1? I'm sure we're going to have to hear about ISOM 1 because it's not really about quality. It's really about 
trying to knock somebody down who's being more successful than everyone else in the indie space. I thought they could take criticism. We have, of course, Tizo Spencer, who actually is the one using his book as a battleground. Comic artist, mas comic art master one, which is Joe Ball's Twitter. Joe, I would highly denounce someone like Sturgis, bro. He doesn't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Okay, you think Joe Ball cares? Joe Ball's not about the drama, stupid. Joe Ball's not saying anything. He's just working on his book, which I'm looking forward to reading. Nobody cares about your dumb assery. And you put this up 53 minutes ago, you got nothing. Nobody cares. You're a moron. You're retarded. Nobody should listen to anything you have to say when you're literally retarded. You say the most stupidest things. For using your book as a battleground against other creators, you're the one that tagged him. By the way, he follows me on Twitter, stupid. So everything I say, he can just DM me. He can easily DM me, say, listen, stop you know, promoting my book. All I do is promote his book. I don't use his book for anything but promotion. And I, people out here like Shane Davis act as if everyone except for him can put out a high-quality book. There are plenty of artists... And I've named quite a few. I've named Joe Ball, I've named Dillard, and I've named Alex Ross. I said they're all better than EVS. And there are plenty of other people that agree with me. But the fact that you want to act smug because, I, because you want to be like, oh, if you don't want to buy high quality pro Bro, I bought Starlight Cats. I have two variants of Starlight Cats. I have the Merlion Rising, and I have the special Tampa Con variant. And Glorious Rex... I have every single variant of Inglorious Rex 1. I bought the I Want It All that cost $250 to get every variant. Because I liked Inglorious Rex 1 so much, I went all in. But if you want to be smug and you want to act like an asshole, refund me. Please refund my $250. I would love for you to refund that. Because I don't need to spend my money with, a, with an artist, with a writer, who likes to talk down to a paying customer. This is why people support the Ripperverse, because Eric doesn't do that nonsense. Not once has Eric ever talked down to me as a paying customer, which is what he's always talking about in the mainstream, that they talk down to their customer as if you are above them, when they are the ones that put you in the position that you're in. It's not smug when everyone knows Isom is an obvious crap comic. Who's everybody? My guy, dumbass, nice opinion, you're allowed to have one. Not everyone thinks it's a crap comic, dummy. Who is not wanting to buy Shane's books? A lot of people, a lot of people. More people have bought I Saw One than any book that Shane, EVS, or John Malin have put out. Whether it's I Saw One, whether it's I Saw Two, even Alpha Core did better than Cyber Frog 2. It's going to do better than Cyber Frog 3, for sure, because it already did better than Cyber Frog 2 compared to the numbers based on how many comics were sold with the original campaign and the Second Chance campaign. Alpha Core 1 still sold more books. And Chuck Dixon's a legendary Batman writer. Of course, people were going to buy it. And people loved it. Most people say Alpha Core is the best written. Shocking. Even myself, I said that too. Wow. When did you read Death, Death, Death? What was your favorite part? Oh, you're one of those. But you know what's funny? I don't have to wait four plus years to get a 48-page book of Rainbow the Brute. At the very least, I'm going to get a 300-page book for a better value. And my book's going to be hardcover. Not to, That's the craziest part. The book's going to be 300 pages and it's going to be hardcover. And it's going to be a new story. It's not going to be fucking warts and all where you get old shit i'm gonna get a brand new story created by joe ball written drawn inked and colored by one person one guy not a team one guy doing all the work except for the lettering obviously i believe eric weathers does the lettering correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but if you're gonna be this stupid you literally your name is these people are stupid you're stupid
you're retarded. Because you're not understanding what I said. I said he's being smug because he's acting as if he's the only person or CG is the only group of people that make high quality comics. That's not how this works. You don't talk down to a customer. I've been a multi -re multiple repeated customer. I was going to buy XN Level Up. Where's that book at? And I said it in the past. I said that I'm, I'm waiting for Inglorious Rex 2. And I understand because Shane had to go through surgery and get surgery on his drawing arm. So I understand why it's late. There's a legitimate excuse as to why it's late. Even Graham Nolan, a guy that hangs around the Comics Gate Kings, has said it doesn't take three years to make a 48-page book. The man has put out probably eight different books. I own Alien Alamo, by the way. So, my quality book. I own every book of She that Billy Tucci put out. I own Alien Alamo. I own Cyberfrog. And Godlike is the first book I'm getting from John Manling because I think they look the coolest. I think it looked the coolest out of everything he put out. Godlike looked interesting to me. And I got a creator signature tier of Godlike. So if you want to sit up here and say more quality book, I guess all those people I just named didn't put out quality books according to you because I have them all. I said to Grim Jim, I said, the quality and cost comes down to the customer themselves. If you don't like the quality of something, you don't buy it. If it costs too much for you, you don't buy it. It's not a hard concept. Which, even when, even when Eric July hired Kane and White to be the art director of Ripperverse to help improve the artwork of the artist he already has, when, you, when they put out the artwork for Yaira, everyone accused Deborah of using Kane and White's work. When you can look up Deborah Carita's work and it looks the same. It doesn't look very different to her old stuff. You guys literally teamed up with someone who openly wants to destroy Eric's business, but tell me more. Yes, Dick Masterson, who openly said he wants to destroy Eric's business because my bad art. This is on video. You can find the clip. Don't take my word for nothing. You can find the clip. It's out there. I'm not so sure about that. It seems to me literally everything can be criticized about Eric is criticized to the fullest extent possible for emotion-driven clicks. It doesn't really inspire the criticized to instantly jump to defend the criticizer, even though they're literally on the same side. In fact, this is one of the reasons I'm not the biggest fan of Trashcast. Even your own viewers don't care. People who have asked for refunds don't care about Trashcast. They want you to finish your books and put them out. You wouldn't do Jack Squad, neither would Shane Davis, John Mayle, or EVS. I wish you were right, but didn't the foul boss hog say people like the Sasuke sisters are these terrible people and must be gay kept out of comics? He has a point. Jay Bauman fan did say that. Seems from outside looking in, don't gatekeep me, but feel free to gatekeep and cancel people we don't like. You're kidding me. It would be the subject of the next trash guys and be grifted for all it's worth. I think I'll press X to doubt. I said I have to see it to believe it. I actually said that. I'd have to see that to believe it, considering the way Shane is acting very smug to me, a repeat customer who has constantly defended him. So, and then this person is like, EVS also only attacks in defense. I don't always agree with him, but some of the actions he has taken, but he is a person that was canceled, scared, came close to doing this, and most likely had some bad PTSD. So keep those things in mind. I'm trying to play the pity card. I don't care. About all that. I said, none of this is my problem. EVS said I would deserve to be doxxed. You think I give a crap about any of that? He attacks you just for liking something that, has nothing, that he has nothing to do with. I've supported plenty of creators who can stay out of the drama and just work on their stuff. I showed three people, by the way. Raging Golden Eagle, Tyler, and Joe Ball. Three different people on this video that stay out of drama and just work. Who can put out books that I'll buy. I don't think making an entire live stream show dedicated to trash talking line off people of your choice is quote unquote self defense, but that's just me witnessing karma. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, no one is going to sit up here and and say some nonsense, and then again expect people to come to your side. Like me, I've had the same position. If you're making stuff and people want to buy it, go ahead. I'm never going to tell anybody what to do with their money. Unlike the people who are like, you shouldn't buy Ripperverse because this and this and this and this. Because my quality, my 3D assets, my this, my that. I've never done that with anybody's stuff. 
I said, well, you spend your money on whatever you want. You go to work. You earned it. You got the paper. You got the money. You go ahead and you buy whatever you want. Just don't tell me how to spend my money. And don't criticize what I spend my money on. It's my money. Money you'll never see. And I'm going to buy whatever I want. So at the end of the day, if you want to be out here doing all this nonsense, trash talking constantly, and you expect people to come out and help you, you've got another thing coming. Again, I'm going to say it. I don't care if John Malin, EVS, and Shane Davis want to have a booth at C2E2. They should be free to have the booth at C2E2. But for them to be surprised that they've been crapping all over other creators like Eric July for months and months and months. I don't know really Sean, uh, John Malin. I don't think John Malin's really been doing it. I think it's mainly EVS and sometimes Shane. But if they're expecting people to be for their stuff against the cancellation of them from C2E2, they should have expected it when they were out here crapping all over people's work. Thank you all for checking out this video. I really do appreciate all the new subscribers, returning subscribers, new viewers, returning viewers. If you do like this video, hit the like button, comment below if you feel about all this. Subscribe for more content, hit the bell for notifications, set the bell to all. That way you'll get a notification anytime I post a new video live stream. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.